Hello everyone, today I'm going to have a very useful video about your phone calls. Anyone who buys a new smartphone should always configure certain settings related to phone calls and messaging. It's also advisable not to call anyone, text anyone, or send anything until you've configured these phone call settings. This directly affects your privacy, because all apps like these that handle phone calls have various access rights that can track your activity via mobile data or Wi-Fi. Furthermore, your carrier can also track your activity. Various information from your cameras can be transmitted, whether it's the front-facing camera or the main rear camera. Information from your gallery, including your photos, videos, audio, and the like, can also be accessed. In this case, it's best to have absolutely no permissions, as you could lose your personal data. Plus, your GPS could be running in stealth mode. Let's imagine a phone that works with both GPS enabled and GPS disabled. Of course, a phone with GPS will, firstly, drain its battery much, much faster, and you won't know why. Plus, I don't think anyone would like someone tracking their smartphone, or even your and your smartphone's location in general. And yes, this information could be sent somewhere. So, be sure to double check all these settings. I'll tell you everything in detail now and show you. Be sure to support the video with a like. If you have the hype button, be sure to support it too. It's absolutely free for you, and I'd be very, very grateful. And, of course, don't forget to share this video with your friends so they know how to do it too. So, let's go step by step. Look, every smartphone, no matter the model, no matter the Android, or any other operating system, has a built-in dialer and a phone book, which you use to dial numbers. For example, mine is this color. It's blue, and the phone book itself is white. But again, I repeat, it doesn't matter. For someone else, it will be completely different, but it performs absolutely all the same functions that it should. The first, of course, is phone calls, but many people think that this is just a built-in function that allows you to make phone calls or send messages. But in fact, it's a completely separate application. It doesn't matter whether it's built-in or not. It's the same application, for example, as the YouTube application or the Google Chrome application or, for example, Notes or Telegram. That is, I want to tell you that this is just an application that also has numerous permissions that everyone needs to double check. Look, if you simply go to the regular standard settings, scroll through here and find a section called Applications. And then click on All Applications. Here, look, there is a search bar. Just type the word phone. Like this. And for me, for example, what it found was the phone I'm currently using, but it even found a phone, which is built in. That is, I have at least two of them. You may have one, or two, or three. And here's what I want to show. If we click on the phone book, there is also an application permission here. We click on this line. And now look at what we are allowed. In fact, there are many, many permissions here. Permission to your phone book, to your calls, camera, contacts, files, media content, your location, microphone, and so on. And these are all general permissions. That is, there are practically no specifics here. And you really think that's all, but you're wrong. If, for example, we click on the three dots at the top right and show all the permissions here, you'll be surprised. There are actually many more of these permissions. And here we have access to approximate location, and to exact location, GPS determination, sending data via Bluetooth, sending over any internet connection, managing network connections, managing calls, SMS, and so on. But the worst part is that there's constant internet access, and any information can be sent to the wrong place at any second. This is because your default settings aren't what you want. It's best to double check and set at least only those settings that should be accepted during calls. This means your app can't decide for itself whether it needs to track you or send information, for example. You have to configure this yourself. Anyway, I'll show you everything now. Let's start from the beginning. So, first we have the contact list, or your phone book list. Does this app need access to this setting? Of course it does, because you have a specific list of contacts you call daily, for example, your friends, relatives, or some work colleagues. So, you get the idea, this permission is fine, and you can grant it. Next comes the camera. Look, this is why this app needs a camera. So, if you call someone, it will automatically grant access to your camera. It doesn't matter which camera. It could be the front camera or the main rear camera. And this information could secretly take a photo somewhere or even connect online and watch what's going on around you. Yes, by and large, the camera is needed for video calls. So ask yourself, do you use video calls when you call specifically from this app or from an app you personally have installed? I think very, very few people use this, because usually video calls are communicated through other apps. For example, social networks. It could be WhatsApp, Viber, Skype, Telegram, or any other similar app. So, in this case, for example, I block this access to the camera. 
I believe that absolutely no one needs this surveillance during phone calls. Now, consider, do we need contacts or not? Of course we do. So, we're leaving contacts. Next up are files and media content. This is a very controversial issue, actually, because this access basically covers all the files on your smartphones. That means access to your gallery, your photos, audio, and video. You might have some important information there, and this constant access could lead to you losing some personal data, because many people use their phones to capture codes, passwords, and other sensitive information. And this could be leaked during a phone call or when sending these files. And in general, if you have constant access to the internet, just imagine that even when you're not using your phone, this app could be accessed through some other malicious app. But this setting is needed to send, for example, MMS messages. That is, if you're specifically sending an image through this app. But I think that, again, very, very few people do this because, firstly, it would be paid, and secondly, now almost everyone uses, again, social networks. You can easily send all this stuff through WhatsApp, Telegram, or any other app. Therefore, I personally believe that such access should be prohibited. Let's go back. So, so you understand, here's your phone, that is, this specific app you use to make calls, it should only perform its functions, that is, phone calls and nothing more. Now look further. Geolocation, that is, GPS, determining your location. I believe that this setting should absolutely not be left on, because imagine you call someone, and that other person can determine your exact location or information about your location can be transmitted to them. Well, I think that's completely overkill, and it would be preferable to have this kind of surveillance. But it's good if you're calling, for example, a friend. And if you receive another call, a scam call, why would they need your information? Of course, you should block that. You should never allow that. And I'll tell you, the battery will even last much longer than usual because GPS is used in stealth mode. I definitely disable that setting. Let's go back. Next, look, the microphone is needed. Of course, it is, because we're, of course, talking on the phone with the other party, so we leave it on. Next, nearby device. This setting, I believe, again concerns your tracking. Nearby devices work in such a way that everything around them that uses Wi-Fi and Bluetooth automatically connects to your phone. And, for example, these could be trackers of some kind. Trackers that are not secure and can steal your information in stealth mode. It specifically depends on where you are. That is, firstly, you can go to a place where they connect to you, and you won't even notice. Secondly, someone can also connect to you on their own within a Wi-Fi zone, even if you're at home. Therefore, it's advisable to disable this setting as well. It's absolutely unnecessary for your phone. Let's get back to the basics. Do we need text messages? Of course we do, because sometimes we receive a message telling us who's calling, or we send regular text messages ourselves. That's all there is to it, but there are other settings that also apply to your phone's dialer and your contact list, but they're hidden, and few people know what to do with them. The first thing you need to double check is whether someone else is listening to you, specifically through your phone, that is, through an app. Yes, at first glance, this sounds scary, but still, when someone connects to you, firstly, the connection may be poor, and secondly, the connection may be intermittent, meaning you can't hear the person very well. Actually, you might hear some crackling or other sounds during a phone call. So, this is already one of the signs that you're being tapped. The very least you need to do is go to your phone book, which is where you dial a phone number. Click on the dial pad here. Enter asterisk, hash, 21, hash, and press the call button. Now wait and see what appears here. Different smartphones will have different lists. For example, I was told that voice calls weren't forwarded. Video calls, SMS, and other functions may also be listed here. In fact, there could be a very large number of functions here. If there's another phone number, or any phone number at all, in at least one function, it will appear here. First of all, if you see a phone number during this combination, it means all your information, all your online conversations, are being forwarded to that number. In other words, you're calling someone, and someone could be listening in on you at the same time. In that case, if there's a phone number, just go online through Google or any browser and check if it belongs to your carrier. It's possible that the carrier itself forwards such information. In my case, no forwarding occurs at all. And that's the most normal option possible. Second point, if forwarding does occur and you want to get rid of the number that's listening to you, then you need to press the dial pad again, press the hash key, hash key, 002. Hash key, and press call in the same way. Now wait a little bit. And look, it says here that all forwarding has been removed. That is, with just one combination, you can get rid of all forwarding. Next, look, 
This is a very important setting. Few people know that you can protect yourself from scammers. I think everyone has received some strange calls. That is, when, for example, someone calls you and there's no answer, or, for example, they call and immediately hang up. I'll tell you, this isn't done without a reason, because they really want to hear at least some kind of voice from you. For example, you immediately say, hello, 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 but they say nothing in response. And then they hang up. Your voice can simply be recorded and faked using artificial intelligence, and then used, for example, to call your relatives. But that's simple, I'm telling you, it's one of the options. But the best thing is to simply disable such calls right away. To do this, you need to click the three dots in the top right, go to settings, and find the setting responsible for spam calls. It's usually disabled on all of them, so double check. There are usually two of them. That is, the top slider identifies certain large companies using their ID. This means you'll at least see information about who's calling. For example, if it's from a large company, it will 100% show that someone is calling you. The second slider detects spam calls. This means that if a phone number has already been flagged as fraudulent by the system, it will either be blocked automatically and you won't receive the call. Or, if they do call you, it will immediately appear as a scam, making this a very useful feature. All the information is pulled from Google. For example, let's say someone else has already received a similar call and realized it was a scam. Of course, they've filed a complaint somewhere, and Google already has all this information, including a negative review about the number currently calling you. With this feature enabled, you'll be immediately notified that you're receiving scam calls. So, you can either answer the call but be very careful, or I advise you not to answer calls from such numbers at all. Incidentally, it sometimes happens that an unknown number calls, and there's a slight delay in recognizing it. That is, at first it appears normal, but literally a minute later you open your phone book and there's an exclamation point on the left side, indicating that it's actually a very bad number, and it's best not to call it back. If you have any questions about this, you can ask in the comments. I'll try to answer them.